Hey y'all, it is week two of 34 Minute Thanksgiving and today we are talking all about your Thanksgiving Day menu. Here we go. All right, so we are officially 28 days, four weeks from today, 28 days away from Thanksgiving, which is mind boggling. I'm still not sure how we're here, but if you have been following along, if you have followed along in previous years, then you know the premise of 34 minute Thanksgiving is to encourage you to do as much in advance as you can to remove some stress from you on the day of Thanksgiving so that hopefully, while your family's out having fun or turkey trotting or throwing the football around the yard, or watching the parade or whatever it is that they do, you get to join them versus being stuck in your kitchen making the meal for everyone to eat in 15 seconds before they go take a late afternoon nap. So, menu. All right, so when, when we start talking about Thanksgiving menus, there are really like two groups of people that we talk about. I'm gonna start with the first group, which is what I call the DIYers. The DIYers are the people who take on the whole menu themselves. So while their family's outside, let's say, throwing a football, turkey trotting, maybe enjoying a bonfire, something like that, they're in the kitchen making the whole meal themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. In certain situations, that's what you have to do. You have to be in the menu because maybe you have small kids and um, maybe you're only celebrating with the people who live under your roof uh, this year you're the one who's going to take on the majority of cooking when we are talking about just you handling all of the cooking yourself the way we approach the menu is different than when we're talking about a potluck so if you are doing it all yourself the number one thing is to not take on too much. Don't, I really wish this whiteboard was like behind me and I could write on it, but I'm gonna pop it up in a minute. Don't go overboard. That is the first thing. So start by writing down your favorites, your must have items and limit it. Like I love squash casserole. I love um, green bean casserole. I love sweet potato casserole. I love all the casseroles. I mean, who doesn't love casseroles? But if I was doing all of the cooking myself, I would limit it, especially if we're talking about a smaller group of people, because it's gonna mean less work for you and less food waste ultimately in the end, most likely, because as much as we all love leftovers, when you are cooking for a small group of people, let's say there's only four or five of you that live under your roof, if you are cooking for just those four or five people, likely, a two to three of them are your children, um, you're not gonna eat a ton, so if you make these full-size casseroles, you're gonna have a ton of food waste. So don't go overboard when you are thinking about the menu if you are cooking for a small group and you are doing all the cooking yourself. Secondly, be sure to prep ahead everything that you can. Reason being, again, one, we know I'm gonna preach prep until the day I die, but two is that when you are the one doing all the cooking, if you have to make 16 side dishes, you're gonna be in the kitchen until the cows come home. So get done what you can in advance, and that will free you up to spend time with your family and to do the things on Thanksgiving that you can't do in advance. So be sure to prep, prep, prep. If you are making this entire menu yourself, if you are the only one cooking, prep as much as you can. So don't go overboard and prep all, prep everything. Prep everything, which you can, you can just about prep everything. Um, so again, when we are talking about the menu there, you have sole control over the menu as the cooker. Ask your family what their favorites are, but if you only wanna do green bean casserole, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and turkey, that's all you have to do. So you are in, you are in full control of the menu, you pick everything on it, but regardless of, of if you're gonna ask input from your family members or not, do your menu this weekend. That is most important. Go ahead and get that done 
because as we're going to talk about in upcoming weeks, the prep ahead portion of this is something that we're going to start. I will actually probably start our prep next weekend. Thinking about my calendar. I'm going to start it soon either way. So don't go overboard. Prep, prep, prep. Here are the notes I made for you. You can't really see this. This was a terrible idea to have a whiteboard. We're getting rid of it. And I'm going to learn to edit stuff on screen. So moving on to the second group, which is what I call the potluckers. I am team potluck, 100% always. <laughs> Primarily because it's significantly less work for you, less dishes, less work. Um, Bless thinking about things, all the stuff, I am team potluck. So we've all been to potlucks. We know how they work. Everybody brings something. So when I'm putting together a potluck for Thanksgiving, the way that I do it is I start with a generalized Thanksgiving menu. What are the things that we typically have from year to year? And then go from there. So for us, turkey, mashed potatoes, gravy, um, why am I blanking? Green bean casserole, sweet potato casserole, cornbread stuffing, which is really dressing, but cornbread dressing, rolls, um, squash casserole, pies. Sometimes we'll do a salad. Sometimes we'll do Brussels sprouts. That's a pretty big menu. These are things that we have almost every year, but we also have a, a fairly large group, sometimes, you know, between 10 and 12 people, um, sometimes more. But <laughs> anyways. So with a potluck, I start as the host by putting together sort of that generalized menu. And then I look at it as what are the things that I'm going to take on because they're my non-negotiables. They're my things that I just, I ultimately want to have there. So we're in a situation that when we do potluck Thanksgivings, the people coming are our family members. Uh, so they also have very standard um, not standard, but they have the same ideas of what a Thanksgiving menu is going to look like because they're our family members and we grew up having Thanksgiving with them. And so, you know, there you go. But, um, you know, when you do that, everybody's going to have that same idea of what Thanksgiving is. But if you are having people into your home for Thanksgiving in a potluck style, where maybe they grew up not having the same thing as you for Thanksgiving, open the menu up. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. This is what I have done so far. This is why this is why I wish this whiteboard was behind me so I could just like teacher style get on there. Let me grab one second. Okay. I don't this isn't going to work. What am I doing? We're just going to talk about this again. So, what we have done this year for our Thanksgiving menu is I have put together this the standard items and I have gone ahead and assigned myself the items that I'm going to tackle maybe a turkey <laughs> i put a question mark beside that we will do a turkey for sure here what size i don't know that's going to depend upon if my dad fries a turkey as well in which case if we have two turkeys i only have to do a small one not a big one um so i will handle a turkey of some kind i will also handle the mashed potatoes likely the green bean casserole as well and maybe the cornbread stuffing i know my mother-in-law is going to take on the pies, maybe a couple of other items. My parents are gonna take on a couple of items as well. But basically I have listed out the items that we have from year to year. And what I have, what my husband's family have, what Rob's family has, generally the same. We both grew up in the South. There's not a ton of differences between our traditional family Thanksgiving menus. Uh, so that's how we have done it. But in addition to that, we have my brother-in-law's girlfriend joining us this year. Her family is Italian. They always do baked ziti on Thanksgiving. So to make her feel more welcome, to make her feel more comfortable, like it's a Thanksgiving for her too, she's going to make ziti and bring that. And it, it exposes us to her family traditions and then she, you know, is joining in ours as well. So when you're doing this potluck style, if you have people coming, people invited who maybe grew up eating different things than you did on Thanksgiving, Open it up and let them bring that. Don't be so strict with the potluck menu that people have to make what you tell them to make. Um, so do it. So make your menu and then just say, these are the items I'm going to make. I'm going to make the turkey. I'm going to make mashed potatoes. I'm going to make green bean casserole. And I'm going to make cornbread dressing. Those are the four things I'm going to tackle. Everybody else, we'd like you to bring a side. And then let people sign up. 
create an email chain, create a text chain, a Facebook event, whatever it is you wanna do, create a place where um, people can share what they're gonna bring so you can make sure there aren't a bunch of duplicates. So that's how we sort of handle potluck style. Also make sure no one forgets the pies. But the reason it's fun to do potluck style, especially with people who didn't grow up eating the same things as you do, is you get to sort of get exposed to their family traditions, they get to be exposed to yours. Um, so that's the potluck style method of a menu. Either way, whether you are a DIYer and cooking it all yourself or you are a potlucker, this is the time to make your menu. So right now, 28 days, four weeks away, make your menu and start figuring out who is bringing what if it is a potluck or just make your menu if you're gonna, if you're gonna cook it all yourself. Start figuring it out so you can fill in the gaps if you need to. Maybe um, you only wanna tackle a couple of dishes but you start to realize that, oh wait, everybody has signed up for sides and we don't have any appetizers. Then you'll know you need to fill in on the appetizer front. So on menus as well, sidebar, always have appetizers on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Cause you can't eat all day if you, you know, aren't eating all day. But <laughs> I always do appetizers on Thanksgiving. We're typically like a, a three or four o'clock dinner time is typically what we do. So traditionally we'll eat breakfast. Um, in non COVID years, we turkey trot, we eat beignets, we go to the local bar who has a big block party and drink mimosas. So we fill up our morning <laughs> with eating and drinking. And then it's nice to take a couple of hour break and then put out some appetizers about two o'clock-ish, just something light, eat dinner about three or four, depending on when everything is ready. So that's where you're at on the menu. That's what I encourage you all to do this week is to tackle the menu. Um, write it out. If you have any questions, let me know. Drop them below in the comments. Um, also have just launched the Holiday Help Center on our website, so you can go and submit questions there as well. And we uh, publish all the questions with answers, given permission, of course. Um, there, so we've got the Holiday Help Center open for you now also. So that's where we're at this week, week four, tackle your menu. I will be back next week. We will be, oh my God, three weeks out next week. That's insanity. Uh, Next week, uh, I'm going to be sharing the recap of our backyard little makeover and how we did that. We are eating Thanksgiving in the backyard this year because it's not going to rain. I'm speaking that into existence. It's not going to rain. Uh, so we're going to eat Thanksgiving in the backyard. It gives us a little bit more space, good stuff, but it needed a little refresh. I'm going to be sharing all about that next week, how we did it quickly on a budget and just in time for Thanksgiving dinner. So. Everyone have a great weekend. I can't wait to see your menus. I'd love it if you comment below and share your favorite Thanksgiving side dish with me or head over to our Instagram and share it there as well. And I will see you back here next week, Friday, where we're talking backyard makeover as well as some socially distanced Thanksgiving ideas if you wanna keep your distance from friends and family this holiday season. So we'll see you next week. Be sure to subscribe and like. Yes.